<clears throat> peace love and blessings fam i hope um you're all doing well um and if you aren't my prayers go out to you and for those of you that are triumphant above all your challenges and difficulties i salute you and um i want to congratulate you for being resilient and continuing to endure until the very end. This video will be on marijuana, cannabis, right? Like I promised you weeks back that I would do a video on this because I wanted to touch on all of my, you know, vices and addictions. And um, I already talked about months ago, I talked about Early in the year, I talked about why I stopped getting drunk. So I talked about the alcohol. And that's not an issue for me at all, right? Um, with the alcohol, as far as my addictions were concerned, um, I, stopped, I stopped getting drunk. It was uh, New Year's of 2019. And for the past two years, maybe a beer or two, a glass of wine or two, Maybe three, but that's rare. But I don't crave that. I, I I won that battle with the alcohol. I don't care for it, to be honest. Um, I did enjoy a beer. I went out to a restaurant and I enjoyed a glass of, of a Blue Moon, which is a very great taste in beer. Good quality beer, Blue Moon. A nice, lovely pale ale. With a, citrus, a blend of citrus and drop that little orange in there, right? But that that is not even moderation or balance. I just don't care for it, you know. And I'll do a separate video on all these um shit. I might do a live stream, right? Because I haven't done a live stream in a minute, so I might I might do a live stream on how like. So many of these things and stuff, all these things, the things that have held me back and how it's it's used in society, right, um, for the purpose of spell work, even the things that are good for us, because beer is not necessarily bad and neither is wine. Like beer has probiotics in it. Right. And so like a, a good beer, one beer will do you good. Right. It has minerals and probiotics and then the wine has antioxidants. So it's not entirely bad it's just it gets abused <clears throat> many of us have abused it <clears throat> many of us have grown up in cultures that abuse these things and it becomes normalized right to be in this state of inebriation and then if you don't partake in it you're looked at as the weird one so these are my same sentiments with the cannabis with the cannabis it's it's nothing more than um it's a natural right it's a natural plant um, it's, it's a medicine is what it is. That's why in the thumbnail, I labeled it the medicine plant. It truly is a medicine. It's a wonder herb, um, full of medicinal properties. It's a superfood as well, All right? The seeds contain a, a damn near perfect ratio of omega threes to sixes. Good source of protein right? Amino acids. Um, it's a very good uh, superfood. Then you have the, the cannabis oil, the hemp seed oil, right? Um, that's sold in stores, right? Marvelous stuff. Um, and then you can juice the plant itself. You can make a juice out of it. You can juice the flowers and the leaves, and then you can drink that. And that contains an abundance of nutrients. But most of the health benefits come in the form of consuming the plant raw, whether you're consuming the oil, the seeds, or the plant, or the juice, raw. And um, there's a there's a there's a channel, a brother by the name of Woodward TV. That's his channel. He put out some good information on this, and um, he put out some good information on this. And I'll link that video in the description. But case in point, right? This is coming from someone that is a true connoisseur or has been a true connoisseur of this particular plant. 
I wasn't just a regular person just, you know, wanting to roll up and get high. No, no, no. I studied this plant, right? The only thing I didn't do was grow it. Um, if I could, I would. But it's not legal in New Jersey for people to grow unless you get a license and all of that. And I'm not going to go through all the trouble of all that other stuff. Um, if I live in a state that allows me to grow, like Massachusetts, I think Vermont, Maine, upstate New York, um, that's a different story. And I'll get to that in a minute. But I just want you to know that this is coming from someone that um, truly appreciates this plant. Right. And knows its its benefits and its uses. But this is also coming from someone that heavily that I'm willing to admit heavily abused the plant. And I'll get to that in a minute. All right. So I want to talk about a little bit about my experiences and how it affects ones, because this is this is this video, again, just like my channel is targeted to the chosen ones. You see, we 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 are of a particular bunch. Right. So there's certain things that we have to be careful with. Um, I started consuming the plant. Um, I was, uh, 17 years old, I believe 16 or 17. I started heavy consumption at 19 and it was every weekend, right? Every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I would indulge. I would go out and I would indulge. And then once I moved out of my parents' house, it was every day because I had my own place and I was allowed to smoke inside of the house because my roommate, he smoked. So he, he, he was a, you know, he was a heavy smoker and he allowed it. Um, so it was all good. And so I indulged, right. Cause I wasn't much of a drinker, although at the time I was drinking a lot as well because I was still partying, but uh, I always preferred the cannabis, <clears throat> right. Then that, I calmed down with that. Right. Especially when I joined the religious group, I calmed down with that. And then I partook in it again. Right. And I started discovering on how like. Recently, I started discovering that I truly. Right. I wasn't using it medicinally. Right. Recently, I have been using it medicinally and I'll get to that in a minute. But in the beginning, in my teenage years, in my early adult years was not using it medicinally it was being used recreationally and it was being abused right and this is not to shame the people that have chronic medical conditions and they need large doses of it daily right i'm speaking about myself who was an individual that morning day and night i had to be high all the time i had no chronic medical condition except for high anxiety and that's why I was indulging in this because I was escaping. See, what I didn't realize is with the partying and the drinking, I was escaping my life at home. The hell that I was going through at home, right? With some demonically possessed people um, that was inflicting a lot of pain and trauma continuously, right? And so I was escaping that. That's why I was never home. That's why I was partying. That's why I was smoking a lot. So then last year, right, fast forward to 2021, last year after I came back from Maine, I had bought some edibles. And after I finished that, I was like, OK, I'm good. I'm good. I don't really I don't really want to overindulge anymore. I want to stay sober, especially when I, I I've said this before. It affects your dreams and we need these dreams. We cannot have our dreams being blocked by any substances. Right. So alcohol going to bed under the influence of alcohol can scramble the mind and it can interfere with receiving messages from, from, from God, from the source, from the spirit world, right? Marijuana does this. Marijuana impairs your ability to dream. And if you do dream, it may be a little weird, right? Um, but those of you that partake in this, right? You know what I'm talking about, right? Especially those of you that remember your dreams. And then when you stop, all of a sudden the dreams come back and may they may be take a few days right so it's it's very important that 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 we understand this right so i'm like okay so coming into 2022 i was like okay all these months i had been i had not been indulging since since the fall of last year when i came back from maine in early november 
And I was good. I didn't miss it or whatever. I didn't crave it. I didn't care. I really didn't care. I didn't want to, you know, buy it. I didn't want to. I was saving money from not purchasing, even though I didn't blow a lot of money on it. Not like when I not, not like my younger years when I was 20 years old. Um, but then it got legalized in New Jersey. Right. And then on on 421, April 20, 20 on the 21st of April of this year, it was officially open for recreational use in New Jersey, right? So what did I do? Man, I went to go indulge, right? I'm going to be honest with you. Like, you know me. I'm straight up, right? Let me take a sip of this kombucha real quick. It's that fermented tea. Very good probiotics. Very good probiotics. Um, I haven't even had breakfast. Basically, kombucha and water has been my breakfast. Later on, I'm going to make myself a decent smoothie and then, you know, carry on through the day with some, with some green vital force. I'll show you that later. It's at home. But um, 420, right? So 420, you know, the national cannabis holiday unofficial now it's like sort of official now that it's being more accepted so i had this nostalgia of like 10 12 years ago when i wished it was legal right because there was all these dispensaries being opened up in california even though they had a tough they had a very rough beginning right with the feds cracking down but it was like it was so surreal to me that because i thought it would take longer but i know why again i'll do another video on this you know, with the spiritual attacks, with the substances, and etc. I know why it's being legalized now. I know why. We should all know why, right? Essentially to help keep us distracted. And that's a point that I want to make in this video with respect to the quality. Not so much a distraction, but the quality. I'll get to that in a few. Um, so I had nostalgia, right, of being able to go to a store when I used to daydream back then, when I used to dream back then of just being able to go to the store and buy a flower, a flower, the same way that we go into a store and buy beer, wine, hard alcohol, right? It's like, to me, it was just nonsense that we had to live like this, right? Because it was all, it's all, it's all about control at the end of the day, Right? And, and fueling all this darkness and, and all this nonsense. And that's really what it what's, what it's about. But I had nostalgia of that. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go, I'm going to go purchase, right? I'm going to go find me some, some decent quality or some good quality, whatever I can find, right? Um, it's coming from a dispensary. Right, which I have my thoughts on that, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, it's a controlled environment. I can't get in trouble for purchasing, right? And I live in a crowded community. I don't have to be paranoid about me blowing smoke. And okay, some neighbors may get mad because they don't want to. They don't like the smell of it, which it smells better than cigarettes. I mean, they've been tolerating that crap for God knows how long. Right. And it smells better than cigarettes. I don't have to be paranoid of people bitching, wanting to, you know, evict me, snitching on the police. It's legal and I'm on private property, so I can't get in trouble for it. So I indulged these past couple of months. Every few days, I would take a few hits, right? Just a few tokes. They didn't need too much. I don't need a whole blunt. I don't need to smoke a whole blunt. I don't need to smoke a whole joint. I just need a few hits, five, six, seven, eight hits, right? And I'm good. And that's for the day, not morning, afternoon, and nighttime, right? For the day, that once a day, or for that day that I did it, and it wasn't even every day, right? I mean, certain people go through an eighth in two sessions. I would buy an eighth. And it will last me two weeks, sometimes a month, right? Just to give you perspective on how much my relationship has changed with this plant. Because 
it truly has became about moderation within the past year, small doses and, and enjoying it because I don't like to be stoned out of my mind. I don't enjoy that anymore. And this brings me to my next point. There is something different about what I, what I was, the high quality stuff that I was getting 12 years ago, 12, 10 to 12 years ago till now. There is a huge, huge difference, right? I don't enjoy, I know that there's a lot more Indicas on the market and these hybrids and they have these sedative effects and, you know, the sleepiness and it's good for bedtime. I like sativas. I like pure mental. I, I like to be active. I like to be alert. I like to be productive, right? I like to function. I don't like to be zombied out. And, you know, even with some of these sativas, it's like this, this, I don't know what it is. It's like, you know, I don't like to be in couch potato mode. Even when I was younger and I did this, mind you, I could never do this and be home. I had to hide it from my parents. So I was always inebriated off of this plant outside of the home, either in school, in the studio, working on music, at parties, or even on a daily activity. Hell, I would go to the museum after smoking, right? I love the museums over there in New York City. They have plenty of nice museums. And so this is how I would indulge. I would be, I would be functional. I was the functional, very, very functional um, smoker, right? It's not the case. I don't know if it's now that I'm in my 30s, right? Or a combination of I'm in my 30s and the quality has been greatly compromised. I don't like the effects. I don't like it one bit. I, I don't, I don't. That And that's another reason why just a few tokes and then I try different strains and, then, you know, I see what I like, but I have to go through so many strains to get the effects that I want. That is like, it, it just makes me not want to enjoy it. Right. So I started thinking, right, with with um, because it's being mass produced in large amounts to be able to supply it. The whole game is rigged and monopolized in New Jersey. So you have to get a license for it and the ones that have the license for it, it's, it's, um, it's, um, it's few individuals. And then there's, there's like certain criteria that make it impossible for the regular person. Like you have to have a lot, basically you have to have large amounts. You have to be damn, you have to be a millionaire or something or have access to large amounts of cash. Right. So the common folk in New Jersey did, did not have, for the most part, the privilege of starting a growing business. Right. It's completely rigged and monopolized in New Jersey. It's 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 insane. And those that know, right, that have been keeping up, especially if you live in the state, you know what I'm talking about. So now when something is mass produced, right, is being mass produced by corporations, the name of the game is to grow as much as possible. It could be even animals or livestock. I mean, you see what they do with the chickens. Like KFC has its own line of Frankenstein chickens that grow abnormally large because they pump it with so much crap and hormones and, and all these lab-made chemicals so it can grow fast and it can grow big because they need a huge constant supply of chickens for all these KFCs. I mean, which makes sense when you're in that type of game, but there's consequences to this. So it's the same thing with the with the cannabis, right? You you have seeds now that are like um they're called uh I forget they're auto the auto seeds, auto germination seeds. So they're feminized seeds and they grow without being pollinated by a male plant. Because the thing with the, the cannabis is when you grow the plants, you have to separate the males from the females. It's a very tedious thing growing this plant. You have to separate the males from the females because that one, once the females start growing the flowers, right? You don't want you don't you don't want you don't want the female to be pollinated because if not the flowers will not produce THC. The flowers only produce THC in the females if it is not pollinated, right? So so now you have these GMO seeds, right? Because they had to genetically modify them in order to get these feminized seeds, right? And then you have other genetic modifications beyond that 
And then you have, right, all the nutrients, whether it's organic or not, because a lot of these people are using non-organic stuff. Again, the synthetic stuff is often cheaper, more easily mass produced, created in the lab. So a lot of the stuff that we're getting in dispensaries, unless it's certified organic and it is because even with the certified organic stuff, that that may not be 100%. There may be a lot of shortcuts being taken and negligence being done, right? But for the most part, this mass produced, these mass produced plants um, are being grown with non-organic and often toxic compounds to make it grow faster and make those flowers grow fatter, just like the chickens, right? And then, of course, there's this flushing that's being done of the plants, giving it water to flush <clears throat> to flush itself out. But the nutrients that was given into in the chemicals that the, chem, the plant was fed, it becomes a part of that plant. There's, there's traces, trace amounts of it in the plant. And then when we smoke it, that goes directly into our bloodstream and it goes into us right especially of these plants if 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 there is there are flowers being sold in these dispensaries that were that were grown with um pesticides right so then we have that pesticide problem just like with the food in the supermarkets that we're trying to avoid all these pesticide and herbicide laden foods right so I started noticing that there were these like effects I was having from even from some of the dispensary stuff where I wasn't I wasn't really like getting inebriated. It was like I was just getting, you know, uh, um, just numbed. Right. I was just being numbed. And then my head is all up in a daze, my, my, all cloudy. Right. My, my my thoughts are all clouded. It's like I didn't like those effects because back in the day. Right. Even after heavy use for several years back in the day, I would feel so energized and refreshed and able to focus with clarity, even while under the influence and accomplish all my tasks. Now it's like I'm in couch potato mode. Right. And this is from dispensary stuff, some of which were claims that claims to be organic or whatever. Right. Which most of that stuff is not even labeled organic. Um. But it may say that, that it wasn't grown with chemicals or something like that. But with this dispensary stuff, I'm over here, you know, not just in couch potato mode, not wanting to do stuff, right? That's why I, I do very minimal, very, very minimal. But um, it, 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 it. It doesn't make me feel like I, I have a high quality medicine. And what's messed up is that in New Jersey, to get medical grade, you need a medical card, right? So I'm going to look into that and I'm going to see if the medical grade stuff is a higher quality than the recreational stuff that they're selling in New Jersey, right? Because I have try medical stuff from people that have a medical card and they've shared with me right and you know it, 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 the same effects that i'm describing i didn't feel as alive and energetic as i did 10 years ago off of what i had 10 years ago it's just you know i just want to be stuck in my thoughts and just zone out and i don't like that you know so with the few strains that i've tried within recent weeks few of them just a few little tokes, maybe like five tokes, right? And I was good. Um, if I did more than that, totally gone. So that's why I don't overindulge no more. I don't even indulge. As a matter of fact, right now I don't even wanna I don't even wanna mess with any of that. Right? My thoughts on it is for me personally, again, I'm speaking for myself. My thoughts on it is that um I would rather grow my own so that I know what's going in it, so that I know how it was grown, so that I know what, I, what I'm consuming. Like, this is why I want to get into growing. It has always been my dream to, to live in an environment. I can't grow anything. I can't even grow herbs where I live, 
right? Because it's just, it, it, it'll be destroyed. I don't have, I don't have a good setup where I live um, to protect any plants that I grow, right? Um, I want to have my own space so I can grow herbs, so I can grow vegetables, so I can grow fruit, right? And if I live in a state, if I happen to live in a state where I can grow some 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 cannabis, I would grow a plant or two for myself, right? For the health benefits, right? Because it's, to me, it's not even about getting inebriated anymore. I don't really care for that. Although I do enjoy those effects and the therapeutic effects that come with that, especially because of the anxiety. But I don't want to rely on that for, for the anxiety, right? And I've been doing very well on not relying on that for the anxiety. Um, but but that's why my body had been gravitating towards that all these years. Because from any everything that I've tried, and I haven't tried any psycho psycho medications for anxiety or antidepressants or none of that and i won't i uh, you know but um i think this plant has saved me from try trying any of that and consulting with a physician because i don't want to get into those medications it's very hard to come off those medications on top of the uh the, the damage that it does to the liver and to the system right and how it rewires the brain right and then over the long term the damage that it can do to the brain like physically your brain. Um, so I'm glad I, you know, I didn't have to delve into that. And for those of you that, you know, you're on those medications, you know, it, it, it's a, it's a very delicate journey. Don't just come off those medications cold Turkey. You know, it, it's a delicate process. You got to wean your way off little by little, but, um, I would enjoy growing my own. That's where I'm at right now. And that does not that does not mean that if if I come across something that, you know, again, it would be at my discretion, right? So if I come across something that is claimed to be grown organically, right? And I can look into it as much as possible and I'll try I may try it. But I'm not I'm not really into doing it recreational anymore, right? Like I said, the past few months it was medicinal and I have been studying it. I'm not into doing it recreational anymore. I'd rather be sober. I really rather be sober. I'd rather be sober even when I drink the alcohol. When I drink the alcohol, right, I drank the beer like a week or two ago, right? And then the past two years, I told you, I've been drinking a glass or two of wine whenever I indulge, which was every once in a while, not even every week, like every few months, a beer or two every few months, right? Um, I'm not drinking it because I want the effects anymore. I'm drinking it now because I enjoy the taste and the quality of certain wines and beers, right? Like I told you, the Blue Moon, I love the Blue Moon. It's very refreshing. I had one, and that was it. I was good with that, right? And so with the cannabis, whether it's edibles, whether I make a tea or a hot chocolate, the hot chocolate is my favorite, right? Whether I make cookies or brownies, whether I choose to smoke it, right? Um, I'm going to enjoy it and I'm going to enjoy it in the moderate amounts and I'm not going to be ashamed about it either. That's another thing. I had to hide it from my parents even after I moved out, right? First, I had to hide it from my parents living with them because they would kick me out, especially my, my stepfather, right? And people would say, oh, they would never kick you out. Yeah, yeah. See, they didn't know because they didn't. Oh, yeah, parents always say that, but see, they didn't know with the level of demon that I lived with, right? With the, they didn't know the demon dictator that I lived with. And I ended up getting kicked out anyways, not for that, for something else, for standing up for myself against this demon. I ended up getting kicked out anyways. So I had to hide it from the very demon that told me that if I ever tried it, to let him know that I could trust him to talk to him about it. But the thing is that up until I cut his ass off out of my life, every time I would see him, he would rub it in my face. I, all I did was drink alcohol and I never smoked marijuana. He would rub it in my face, right? As if it's something for me to be ashamed of when he's a fucking alcoholic. Excuse the French. But um, but I had to hide it from them because of the shame, because of I, I cared what they think. Now I don't care what nobody thinks, right? Well, I stopped caring what people think a while back. 
Um, so I'm not going to feel guilty about it. I'm not going to feel bad about it. There's nothing, there's this stigma with this plant, right? And the stigma is because of the bad, rep- the bad, the bad impressions that people have received from it because of the people that have done it out in the open and also the government propaganda is all it is, right? But I'm not going to feel ashamed about it, and neither should you. But I would recommend is that, you know, you enjoy it with moderation and that you, you know, you take into consideration. Do you really need to be stoned out of your mind or do you need a little bit? Because the more that you consume, right, the more money you spend because you're going to need more. And the more you will smoke, if that is your, your method of medicinal delivery, the more you will smoke. So the more, the more you agitate your lungs and your throat, right? If you're smoking it and, and you're just building more tolerance and then you're going to need more. There's nothing cool about, oh, I smoked the fattest blunt. That's all you smoke, that little tiny thing. That's nothing. You don't smoke like me, right? So you think, you think you're the cool guy because you're smoking Cuban cigar sized blunts, Cuban cigar size joints. You think you're the cool guy, right? And there's nothing cool about that, right? Like I said, all you need is just a few tokes. That's it. You don't need an enormous amount. Um, Unless, of course, unless, of course, you have a chronic illness, right? And your health situation requires it. Um, But... It was easy. I'll say this. I'll end it with this, right? Because a lot of people, oh, it's not an addiction. It's not. Well, we use another word. And again, we're just playing semantics. We use a word called you become dependent on it. But that's what addictions, that's how they start. Your body becomes, the, you begin to crave it. Now, of course, this 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 type of addiction is different. From the hard drugs, heroin, cocaine, which I've never done, right? Meth is very different. You're not going to get addicted from one, right? The addiction comes in the dependency. But the source of the addiction is not the substance itself. And alcohol works in this way as well. You're not going to be addicted to alcohol the first, second, or not even the hundredth time you drink it, right? It's a dependency issue that accrues over time. Right, a dependency issue that accrues over time, and um, a dependency issue that accrues over time, and um, and it gets worse over time. And the source of the dependency of that addiction is not the substance itself; it is an underlying mental, emotional, psychological condition, usually some sort of trauma, unhealed trauma. With me. It was the whole scapegoating thing, right? And the whole family dysfunction scapegoating thing and the trauma that was inflicted on me and constantly made to feel like I'm less than nothing, right? And and dealing with unreasonable people that I can't even express how I feel. I'm constantly just told I'm a victim and they're just not trying to hear it. And I'm constantly berated and demeaned and, you know, all that stuff and, 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 the defamation of character and the, and the slander, right? So that was the source of me sedating myself all the time. Once I identified that and once I began to heal that, I no longer suffered any substance abuse, even, even within recent months when I indulged in the cannabis use, right? Once I realized that. Right. So those are my thoughts on the cannabis. Right. Like. If you live in a state where you could grow your own. I would recommend I would recommend that if you have the patience for that. If you buy it from somewhere else. Right. I highly recommend exercising, you know, discretion. Um. You do it at your own discretion and at your own risk. Right? If you don't know how that was grown, if you don't know what that person did to grow that and what that person put in that, you do so at your own risk. 
and I'll say this last thing, even though I said I would end it a few minutes ago, but, you know, in the scriptures, it talks about multiple times about being sober. And the book of Peter talks about be sober and vigilant because your adversary, the devil, right, is out there like a roaring lion, right, wanting to devour. Um, and the word sober doesn't mean not high or drunk, not inebriated. The word sober means circumspect, you know, to be calm in the mind and spirit and be aware of your surroundings and aware of what's going on. But here's the thing. If you're high out of your mind and you're drunk out of your mind, or you're both, right? It's difficult to be on point. It's difficult to be, you know, you may be in those stages where, you know, you become more alert. Like I used to be, you become more alert when you're when you're um on cannabis, right? And you start noticing things. It's like you're because it blows open your third eye and you start noticing things that you didn't notice before. And your senses get heightened, right? So you may be at that stage, if, especially if you're a rookie. But I don't know. I can't say that. Like I said, the quality of what's out there now has shifted and changed, right? And, and I don't trust most of it, right? And for those of us that are chosen, that are on the spiritual journey, it really would be expedient for us to go to bed sober, and to not be inebriated all the time, right? Um, it would just be much better for us to develop our our spiritual powers, our God given gifts, sober, right? That that's just my suggestion. That's my <clears throat> that's my opinion. That's my two cents. Um, but again, this truly is a medicine. Right. In its natural form. Um, and in order for me to stop abusing it, OK. I had to identify the underlying issues, which thankfully I did. Right. And I'm still healing those underlying issues, but I have made um, great progress. Right. And I just don't enjoy being stoned out of my mind anymore. I really enjoy being out in nature like I am right now. I'm in the I'm at the park. Right? I really enjoy being out in nature, just sober and 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 taking in the fresh air. And it's like when you when you are inebriated every day, all day, and then you come down from that and you stay sober, right? It's like because like I said, in the beginning stages for some people, you may have such great clarity. And you start noticing things that you didn't notice. And you, it gets, you know, it's to the point where it's like, damn, I smoked this. You want to read while being inebriated. You want to watch these movies being inebriated. You want to paint and make music and whatever arts and crafts while being inebriated because it's fun. But after being, after, after you, eventually your dopamine receptors, you wear them out. You, you you exhaust your dopamine receptors, right? And then you you experience what's called burnout. And then you're still chasing these first highs because you need more and more. Like I said, the tolerance goes up. And then what happens is even if you have good quality stuff because you're on it all day, every day, it's like it's like it's like you're in a daze, right? Mind you, I've been doing this since I was 17. I'm 32 now. Um so it gets to a point where you burn out and then you're in a daze, but you don't even realize how much you're in a daze, right? Until you stay sober for a few weeks. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, shit. I thought I was seeing the world clearer. But in reality, I was seeing the world at 480p. But now I'm sober. I'm able to see the world in 4K is what I'm trying to say. Some of you may disagree. That's okay, right? My point is, is look, moderation is, is absolutely key. I highly recommend not to do that before bed unless you really have to, right? Um, don't feel guilty about it neither, but also be circumspect as to where you get what you get, where you get it from, and what are you getting, right? Because if you're not growing it, you don't know what's in there. 
And I'm sorry for the rant. I didn't want to make this this long, but um, this video was long overdue. And I have a lot of, you know, strong opinions about a medicine that I have enjoyed for so many years that has now been perverted. And um, getting good quality is, is, is very difficult for most people. Um, but anyways, you know, you can leave your thoughts and comments, um, share whatever you like, your experiences. Um, I would much appreciate it. And um, I wish you all the best and peace, love and blessings.